into play. Awesome, yeah, I see it. Yeah, yeah. Gotta make mm. sure I record this stuff. Otherwise, I forget. Man, I'll I tell you what, um, just a, a side note. After our chat last Sunday, when I went into BJJ this week, just like little dots firing and connecting. Like, for example, uh, at the club this week, we're working on some X, a single leg X guard and some X guard stuff. And just like the importance of the ankle flexion position, so tibialis mm. raises, Chip, yeah. for Wait, like sec sec securing that hooks, you know, mm. just um, like looking, like identifying and looking at the, the value of patterning and those patterns being present in other areas. Mm. Just little dots firing, you know? Mm. Yeah. Um... I'm I'm currently still stuck in the quarantine, but I definitely I definitely feel yeah it's just um, having more awareness of the positions that we 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 put ourselves in and then what are the the main functions through that um, mm. such as you know using uh, X guard uh, De, De La Hiva as well De La Hivas and stuff like that um, so important to have adequate uh, ankle flexion and and ankle extension of course as well. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we have a couple more minutes. I'm not too sure who's going to jump on, but either way, um, I got pretty buzzed actually after that call last Sunday. Um, just fine. It was like just just buzzing. Um, because I just feel like every, everyone's on that same path. We're all looking to try and self improve ourselves. Um, and as I said, I'm, I'm unsure where this is heading, but I really am enjoying the direction that it is going. Um, I'm just I'm just looking up the telegram stuff here. Um, on, on, on that note, Ethan, mm -hmm. did, how'd you go this week in terms of like yeah. putting yourself putting yourself out there or conversations with fellow guys? Like mm. yeah. report report back. Dude, yeah, I was yeah. actually uh, I was super successful. I was surprised. Um, well I shouldn't say successful yet, but I I reached I had two people that I was able to talk to about this stuff. And um, I got one of them coming into class early on Monday. I'm going to take him through a, a zero gravity workout because he's been having knee problems. And yeah, I would not have done it if I hadn't heard you talk about that stuff last week. So I feel super confident now going into it. Kudos, bro. That's, yeah, that's awesome. That's, that's, so cool, that's yeah. a win, man. That's a, that's a massive win. Congratulations, bro. Yeah. And, the and, 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 and all the best for tomorrow. Thanks. With, with yeah. that, that individual. Thanks. Yeah. You uh you'll crush it, man. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, no, I'm excited. Yeah, I think your just your passion's gonna come through, you know. Yeah. yeah. Mm hundred -hmm. percent. Um are you guys both uh oh sorry to interrupt. No, you're right. Off you go. No, back. no, you're right. you guys both I didn't get to ask last time. You guys are both full time trainers, yeah. Yeah, um, uh, I'm full. I'm not full time, but uh, I make a, enough income where I can work online, essentially. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, wait, because how much is the? I make. Uh, I'll, actually, I'll tell you exactly. Pro approximately make um, right now because I had to move now, so we're in quarantine, so I don't have no face to face business anymore. Um, making approximately eight hundred Australian dollars, which. How much would that be in US? That'd be a lot less, of course. That'd be about what, five hundred maybe, five hundred US maybe. Five hundred. Yeah, yeah, roughly. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, the dollar is pretty similar to um, yeah. New Zealand as well. I think. I'm not up to date yeah. with the dollar, but uh, yeah, we we're, we're able to. We're, I guess we're both able to survive um, quite comfortably now. Yeah, I'm um coaching business. Yeah, I'm 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 full time, Ethan. Uh, I'm back in yeah. the breath face to face this last week. I would have I haven't done the count yet, but it would have been somewhere in the marker of forty to forty five face to face sessions. Nice, um, nice, that's good. And my my income bracket is I get taxed too much. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I get taxed way too much here in NZ. I'm in I'm in that top. Um, it's a six figure, so it's a hundred k plus business NZ dollars per year. Um, but I'm at, uh, but I'm at that um, 
I'm at that tipping point now where it's like I want actually want to reduce the number of com contact sessions. So I would like to ship like offer people value, say that their cost per session is less, but so that I can put them into twos and threes because you know, 40 to 45 contact sessions is just not allowing me as much time as I would like to work on these other projects. So mm. I've, I've got a I've I've got a good problem right now, you know? Yeah. And it's just like selling the solution. So um yeah. And you know, we're a bit, we're, we're quite blessed here in NZ that um touch wood i do think there might be another lockdown coming soon but we haven't we've been we haven't been in a lockdown for like 150 or like six months sort of thing you know so um we're, we're able to do like we're able to go to festivals you know like there's concerts happening every weekend so it's it's a yeah, little bit that's unheard of dynamic that's unheard of at the moment so, uh, like 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 we did new year's you know like we did new year's proper so like we're in you know like so i don't that perspective of like what's happening in the world you know i'm, I'm aware that we're pretty blessed to be able to do that face to face but in the same breath like maybe it's keeping me in the face-to-face -face model where i could shift towards the online as well so i have mm. to be aware of that too you know because i am a little bit in a comfort zone with the face-to-face -face and mm. maybe it's like not pushing me to the other space you know, so mm. I gotta I, I gotta keep that balance, you know. Mm. Hey Nick, good to see you, bro. Hey Nick. Hey man, good to see y'all. What's up, buddy? You good? Yes, sir, always. Man, you got the beard going on too. Oh, maybe maybe that maybe this is a new rule. Like uh if you're gonna jump on the call, you need to have a beard or something. I don't know. True, true. <laughs> I, it has um, to be a certain certain length. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not to get the measuring tape out. Um, hey, um, we, we heard from Ethan before, Nick, um, just wondering how your week has been in terms of like, you know, what's come of the conversation last week and application and whatnot. Yeah, so um, basically, it has, it's been a super busy week. I'm trying to get ready for Worlds, doing a jujitsu. Um, When's Worlds? But... Uh, it is, it's in a couple months actually, but our coach just buckled down hard on us. Uh, it's and October 7th through the 10th, mm -hmm. but uh, he basically gave us the whole speech. Like if you want to be a world champion, you got to train like a world champion, do what other people aren't willing to do. So, you know, that got us all fired up. But um, mm -hmm. what, what little I was able to do and try to work on and get done. Um, I started working on, some kind of ways to do our, the shoulder mobility. And uh, I, I kind of looked into hip mobility too, using just body weight, you know, um, and kind of warming up the hips and the shoulders all in kind of the same breath. Um, I would have to video it, and show you guys, because it, it's kind of tough to explain. But mm -hmm. um, that feels nice doing that before and then a couple other things just like that similar just like warm-up ideas you know um mm. and then i i got a couple new possible clients um other than that it was nice, pretty man. uh pretty you know normal week mm. it's really good Thank to you. hear nice man that's really cool to hear um yeah uh well so that's not that's not that far uh, away at all it's uh what's it now august now yeah, it's what pretty much just two months, about right. eight weeks, about eight weeks or so. Right. Getting yeah. in camp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. What a, what a great time to really uh, preach uh, what you speak, you know what I mean, with, with all this HEG stuff. It's like, this is an awesome, like, uh, it could be an idea as well to even look at and see if you can um, be the guy for the competition team um, for all the like rehab protocols and all that kind of stuff as well. So, what about uh, you guys? How how has y'all's week been? Well, I think I, I think uh, Devin, you you seem to um, actually. Well, how how has your week been like uh, as well? I think uh, Ethan, you've had a very successful week. Um, yeah, what about yourself, Devin? Um, so I was on a real buzz after our call last week. So I started really like nothing. Um, put my head down and I. 
started basically writing out the template for my workshop on the 28th, um, which just, it just flowed. Like it was just in the zone, you know, and it's just really taken some nice structure. And um, yeah, and I think I've got some good ideas in there, which actually I wouldn't mind sort of like running past you guys and getting your feedback and thoughts on um, as part of today's call. So that, that's been really awesome. Um, and then this morning, just before I jumped on the call, I responded to our three, the three questions that were asked mm, and, um, you, you know, and, and um, yeah, like the, I really liked that we put in the professional thing because the question about how do I organize my day, it really highlighted it for me this week, you know, and there were a couple of things that became really glaringly obvious for me, mm. which is like, I got to, I actually need to schedule my meal time because it's like me putting energy back in and taking that moment for myself because I can really get run away with like being enthusiastic with clients and then not capitalizing on that 15 minute gap that is meant to be there. Like I got to schedule. Mm. It's just like, as I get busier, I have to get more efficient with it. So I went and actually got this weekly planner. Well, actually one of my clients gifted this to me, perfect timing. Thanks for training me. So I'm going to actually use this right. because uh, to give it more like visual, you know, appeal for me. So, um, but yeah, and then this morning I had a real like light bulb moment. I went to the gym, I trained, did me, and I was in the shower and I went, boom, okay, I know what my next step is for the BJJ club is that, so this one coming up, this bulletproof for BJJ, zero to minimal equipment, GPP, and then the one I want to do in November, I'm going to drive it towards slant boards and kettlebells mm. because that's the most effective use of the space. Plus when I think about like, um, bottoms up stuff 90 90 carries just like thinking about what we're talking about with kimuras and that like the the patterns and what we have the front rack stuff you know like with the kettlebells what we, it's so transferable to bjj and we don't need a squat rack and this and that you know like i think um pedro is going to put a, 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 a get a pull-up bar fabricated so between if he gets that done between rings TRX, the pull-up bar and kettlebells. That really is a complete system for BJJ. And, and, and so, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm buzzing, man. I'm buzzing. I'm just little things, just having those moments, you know. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and I, yeah, like I said, I, I, I want to share with you guys where I'm at sort of with this, my, my, my workshop, because I think there's some good shit happening here. I'm keen for some feedback just to as a, as a soundboard. Might as well keep going. Yeah. yeah. Keep, um, yeah, show, show us what you got. Okay. So I'll, I'll give you the, the overview. Um, so I always like the idea that when you um, kick off a workshop, you need to sh share your personal story, you know, and, and the strength of this workshop, as I've said previously, is is the buy-in we have from the success of rehabilitating Pedro, this, our sensei from his um, potentially rehabilitating knee injury. And also my own personal story and, and, and my colleague will be presenting with me with our injury history. And also like my colleague who's gonna be presenting with me, he, he, he's, he coached one of our good friends to a silver medal at the, um, at the Delhi Commonwealth Games in Decathlon. So his previous experience, he was strength and conditioning coach for New Zealand Breakers and also for a lot of New Zealand track and field athletes. So right at the outset, we want to create that buy-in with the story. Um, and then we want to shift towards, you know, like focusing on that injuries and that, that I, want to, I want to burst the bubble and say, you know, um, although the, the workshop is bulletproof for BJJ, let's be very clear on the fact that we can't bulletproof against everything but we can have better prepare you to reduce the likelihood of injury or to get you or introduce ideas to get you back onto the mat faster if injury does happen, because there's so many variables at play as we know when it comes to injuries. So um, what's the solution? Well, introduction pr principle number one, do no harm. You know, that's a Dan John um, principle that I really like. And that's like something we should carry into so many areas of our life, you know, like just do no harm physically, do no harm to your reputation. Just, just, you know, anything that does harm, like avoid it, like don't do it. It's a no go zone. Um, and then what we've spoken about previously, uh, introduction of the injury protocol, 
you know, as the athlete, what's what's the care and repair team? So what's the network we're building, physios, chiros, osteos, et cetera? And what role do the coaches play in this? Introduce the notion of specialization programs. So knee ability zero, which I'm going to give send out to everyone in attendance via email because that's what Ben says, like share this with the world, you know, like boom, like the, co- the, the money they're paying for the course, it, like, They'd be paying that for knee ability zero if they went and signed up anyway, you know? So, like, again, that's something tangible that they get in their inbox immediately, you know? Um, focus area, shoulder and upper back, the notion, um, uh, lower back issues, hips and glutes. You know? um, introducing the idea that we're going to periodize the warm-ups for the, for the club, and also we want to create a better cool-down culture, you know? So, like, once before they leave the mat, before they leave the gym, what are some simple processes and protocols you can do? One idea is like reset breathing, um, which is something I picked up from PJ Nestler, you know, three minutes where it's just to down-regulate from like sixth gear down into third, third gear or second gear before you even leave and go and load up with life stress, you know? So that's the first sort of bit which then leads into the notion of like recovery and principle number two, sleep trumps all else or something to that effect, you know? So we've got two principles now. Number one, do no harm. Number two is like the only training worth doing is that which you can recover from. So sleep trumps all else, you know? And then layering in, um, I don't know if you guys have ever listened to the Matthew Walker podcast with Joe Rogan. Well worth your time. He's the sleep doctor. I think it's like 1,089. And something in there he talks about is like they got these these mice and they attach these like little sensors to their brain, right? And so they put them in this maze. And when they're running around the maze, it like registers like dum 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 dum. Like there's a gap sort of in their learning process. They continue to listen to these mice when they sleep, and it was like dum, 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 dum. they're just like they sped it up, put them back in there, and they just run through like they know their way around. So um, there's a, a tip for you. Go and listen to that podcast. Well worth your time in terms of the value of sleep and recovery. So principle number two, and then um, touching on principle number three, um, fuel for performance. And so the key principles I want to convey is one, eat multiple meals per day. Two, cut out processed foods. Three, <clears throat> eat fruits and vegetables at each, each meal. Four, drink more water. Five, eat protein at each meal. And six, be strategic about starches and or grain-based carbohydrates. Just as some six key pillars that covers the nutrition thing. And then, um, all right, like where are we now? Where are we going? And this is where I introduced the belt syllabus. It's based off the tab system as well. So there's four stripes at each level. Um, And so what I'm proposing for the white belt is the ability to perform a standing pipe, palms flat on the floor, and then the trunk flexor endurance test. So that's the 60 degree sit back. Um, It's it's a McGill test protocol. They're basically a side plank hold and then the Sorensen hold as a muscular endurance test. So that's what I'm proposing as the white belt for the syllabus because Having that muscular endurance through the core underpins, one, the reduction in the likelihood of lower back pain and and related injuries. And two, it also means that, like, your joints are going to be better able to perform their function because um, proximal stability creates distal mobility. So that's base level. And then I want to introduce the four stages of learning by doing, um, I don't know if you guys have heard of the Fukuda stepping test which is basically 60 seconds eyes closed marching on the spot and um when you take out that sensory feedback people will often go off like in various directions but i want to sort of use that one that's a great test in of itself and two to introduce the unconscious incompetence conscious incompetence conscious competence and then unconscious competence stages of learning process that underpin the direction we're going and then with that all done, I'm going to go straight into knee ability zero and do that 30 minute or, or whatever, 30 to 45 minutes that it's going to take me to take them through the 10 pieces of knee ability zero. Boom. And then 
I'm working on the rest of the template of the workshop, but that's when we'll probably go into the shoulder stuff, neck, blah, blah, blah. So that's where I'm at. Um, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty cool, man. You've, <laughs> you got, you put a lot of love into this. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with where it sits right now. I think it's a nice flow. I mm. think it makes sense, like, to cover off some of those, you know, principle one, do no harm, principle two, sleep, trump, all else, principle three, fuel with purpose, before actually getting into the movement stuff, because if they can improve some of those areas, mm. like, and like, we know that when you're on the mat, like, fucking, like, if someone taps, like, stop you know like we understand the principle of do no harm but like let's ingrain it into like just you know we, we understand it when it comes to others but what about ourselves is because we're so type a personality sometimes you know if we can fuel a little better we're going to sleep better there's not a nice interplay there anyway yeah yeah i love it. i think i think that's what you've what you said there too like um not i feel I feel with a lot of like stuff like this with the in, in, in the past and even now, like they just purely just focus on jujitsu and they just focus on just what's happening on the map. But we tend to forget what about outside the map? What about you yeah. know, like sleep? Like educating people about sleep. Um, you know, that's not only just to prove your your jujitsu, but we're also looking to prove the quality of life. And I think something that maybe we've unintentionally done with uh this group chat with uh i think actually you actually brought this up Devin, was about having a professional question you know how to organize your day better or how to you know whatever it is how to manage your social media or something like that right uh that is a part of the culture that we we're creating right now it's not just about the improving and, and improving your longevity of health it's also outside the mat so you can be a black belt on and off the mats as well. And I think mm -hmm. that's something that's quite unique about it where I've seen uh, there's there's two guys, uh, uh, they, they, the business is called Bulletproof for BJJ and um, really good guys. Um, and don't, they don't do any of the ATG system or anything like that. It's just a very you know, traditional of, you know, um, kettlebell stuff and, and all that kind of stuff that you see right now, right? Um, but they purely just focus on just improving on the mats, just improving the mats. And I think definitely, I think that's important, but having that vision that is so much bigger that we also want to self, like even with this group call, it's about improving ourselves as people. Because if we're improving ourselves, that means our business are naturally going to follow with that. And I think uh, having, making an impact on people's lives by just even teaching how to eat, like, uh, I, I don't know from your experience with running your face-to-face -face sessions at the moment um, and your experience as well, Nick and Ethan, but uh, I feel like most people under eat protein. They don't, they, at least they eat 50% less than what they should be eating. And really important note there, because if you're not eating adequate sources of protein, therefore your, your likelihood to get injuries is significantly a lot higher. Um, and then obviously, you know, you eat properly, then obviously your energy level is going to better, sleep, libido, every, everything's going to self-improve in that. So I think I, I really love where this is heading, dude. This is really, really cool. And I think it's very, you. it's very uh, replicate. Uh, you'll be able to replicate it again and again. And as you, as, as you continue to do these, uh, you'll be able to refine it and refine it and make it better and better. And to the point where then you go, okay, cool. Now I've got a system. Now I've got something that's actually working right now. Now I'm able to literally go out to the world or around to other gyms in New Zealand or your neighboring countries such as Australia um, to be able to replicate that model. I think it's awesome. Thanks guys. Yeah, no, they, I really appreciate it. Um, the comment on the protein just reminded me of something in this course that I did and was the basic principle was like they they had this test case where everyone had to eat a certain amount of calories mm -hmm. and you had to eat a certain amount of protein anyway they got they got them into that habit and then they said all right now for the next few while you can consume whatever calories you want but you must maintain this level of protein intake and what they saw was a total reduction in the calories consumed 
when that level of protein was maintained because it, it satiates you, you know, like, and, and yeah, man, people are under eating protein that needs to be driven more. And in the basic, in the most simple level, like what's driving recovery? What's the building blocks of like what you're doing physically? It's like sleep and protein. Like <laughs> that's it. <laughs> like let's not complicate it. Sleep yeah. and protein. Dumb it down. And, All right. And the other thing I was thinking is, I've got the note, it's here. Um, you might not be able to see that, but there was, I don't know if it's still there. There's a course that was in the Real Movement Uni. It was the one-hour athlete that Keegan did. And point number one was, um, oh, what, what he said in the beginning. So he said this quote, I wrote it down, be human, be a great human physically and build on top of that as an athlete. You know, and mm. that's the, like, because great humans make exceptional athletes you know and that is the sleep and the nutrition thing you know it's like but that going forward with love and like the environment we surround ourselves with like it's, it's focus on the human piece first and then like the athlete shit follows you know and that's really where i'm trying to come from with that first part of the course it's like can you do better in these three areas all right now i'll give you the physical stuff you know because yeah mm -hmm. It's the most important yeah. stuff. It's the most important stuff, right? Yeah, hard out. Hard I love, out. I love that. That so, what's that quote again? Be a great human, and then build the athlete on top of that. Is that is that is that what it yeah. was? They said, um, "Be human, be a great human physically, and build on top of that as an athlete." And that was mm. Keegan's quote. And that, um, yeah. And if you do like that one hour athlete course in and of itself like the pillars he goes over in there it's like 17 points it's great it's a great overview like so one is like be fat adapted to control insulin three non-functional mass uh, four recalibrate maximal strength five lengthen six healthy tissues that carries on from there it's some really like nice principles of strength and conditioning in there I'm not sure if it's still in the uni, but yeah, one hour athlete. It was a great, nice week course. Um, yeah, and and yeah, what do you think about the the white belt syllabus being that like that standing pipe, then the trunk, the, those various forms of the endurance test? Feedback on that? Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, I I love those. Those sound great. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. I think it's great too. Yeah. I, and I think it's still achievable. Um, actually, just with a question here, and I'm, this actually might help if people revisit this. What do you, uh, can any of you guys actually do the standing pipe? I'm about a couple inches off to get my um, palms to the ground. Um, but have you guys, uh, one, are you able to do it? And two, or what are you currently doing? Or what things have you found that's able to get a bit more length through? I feel like it's the trunk or so the, the thoracic spine that seems to be the, the restriction, obviously, from you know, grappling, push, pull, push, pull, right? Um, but yeah, have you guys found uh, any uh, ways or is it just essentially just time? At least just keep stretching out, keep doing the movements, the elephant walks, uh, stretching out the calves, hamstrings, um, and uh, doing your uh, Jeff Jefferson curls as well. Is there anything have you guys done to um, fast track that progress? So I'm I'm probably around where you are. Uh, I'm not quite there, but I'm I'm relatively close. Um, and what I've found so far uh, is just working doing the, the normal work, uh, like you said, Jefferson curls and the elephant walks. But the mm -hmm. elephant walks for me, for whatever reason, they, they give me a, a pain in my lower back. Uh, so mm -hmm. I've kind of steered clear of those over time. And I just mainly do the Jefferson walks or uh, Jefferson curls. Yeah. But uh, yeah, those seem like they're doing it for me slowly but surely. Okay. Yeah, nice. Uh, I, got, I got surplus range. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, Damn. nice. Easy. Yeah, what is a fucking pike yes, for days. Pike for days. Yeah, I got surplus range there, um, and I, I think one of it is I've just I've always had that good hamstring range, um, 
But what I've found, so he's not with Lucas Aaron when he was part of, he had a really nice, um, basically a head to toe protocol, which um, was three movements. Top of my head. Yeah, it was three movements. So it was the Jefferson curl, um, five rep, oh, yeah, five reps of the three second hold at the bottom. Then it was a donkey donkey calf raise on the slant board. So you would be like, um, yeah. imagine I'm on the slant. So imagine yep. my feet are up and I'd find some level of elevation. It could just be like the chair and I'd be on the slant and I'd go through, pause at the top, slowly down. So 10 reps like that. And then um, the head to toe protocol was like, on the slant or somewhere where you can cut a steep angle. It's this. Okay. So, so you're working into the unilateral. That'd be good for you, Nick, too. Um, I don't know if it'd be able to pinch your back, but gee, yeah, that's okay. It seems like it's hamstring uh, length. That's probably the biggest. I suppose it all have a, a, a role in it, but it seems to be the, the hamstring length is, is the most important. But I think I would, I think you have to, you need to counteract that by doing L sit holds and, have and like hanging, hanging knee raises and that because you gotta, you know, like um, Ben actually talked about it in the Mark Smelly or Joe DeFranco, the Joe DeFranco pro podcast. He, he spoke about how like the seated good morning lengthens the glutes mm. while the ATG split squats um, strengthens the hip flexion. So that protocol, you got to do the front and back. So. I think even those two, you know, doing the ATG split squats, getting down to the ground, getting the knee over the toe <coughs> while doing the seated good mornings, which is that mid-range strength, but lengthens the glutes. That'll give you the pipe. Those two, it's just chipping away at those two, as well as the Jeff, not, not taking anything away from the Jefferson curl because that is the specific application of it. But you need to, you know, like, you need to give permission for the, the back to pike by the front being able to sequence and pull in nicely. Mm -hmm. You know, even even the lying, um, the single leg straight leg raises, you know, um, lying on your back doing the, the straight leg raises, those versions, single leg v ups. Yeah, yeah, like single leg v ups, v that sort of stuff. I think it gives strengthening the hip flexors, gives permission for the back to round and bend. Mm. Right. Just like the tibialis raises with the uh, ankle ankle flexion. Yeah, dude. So, so, same same principle, you know. Same principle, and then actually the other thing that should not be overlooked is do some adductor stuff. Like mm. if you do some side lying, like um, like that. Mm. Oh yeah. Adductors, okay. Yeah. yeah, doing some adductor work. And then everything in the middle just wants to, like, it wants to support that folding position. Yeah, um, they've, they've been having me really wanting to do the, the Copenhagen Hagen squats. I haven't been able to work those into my schedule yet, but those look those look beautiful. Oh, is it the Cossack squat? And, and then the Copenhagen side plank. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's a Copenhagen side plank. And then the, co yeah, same thing, man. Like, if, if you get a bit lateral then that forward goes really nicely too. So yeah, anything that I think can fire the adductors, um, even the um, when you do the 45 degree hip extension or hip extension or even hamstring curls, if you turn your feet inward, you'll find that that inner hamstring rod gets recruited a lot more, which will give permission for the hamstrings to create more length. So manipulating that. Work. Like um, if, if you're doing like on a hamstring curl machine, or a 45 degree hip extension. If you, yeah, rather than having yeah. those feet neutral or turned out, you turn them inward, you'll just feel a different engagement of those adductors. I mean, um, Charles Poliquin had a, 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 a ham, lying hamstring curl protocol where it was like right. feet inward, feet neutral, feet outward. Set, set of four to six with 15 to 20 seconds break between each foot position. It's just, na it's nasty. Mm. But, but you know, yeah. Right? yeah, 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 yeah. You're bang on. He would um uh, hamstring curl with the feet in dorsiflexion, and then lower with them in plantar flexion, which is not too dissimilar to like a B skip 
drill and running, you know, like the, 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 the leg comes up like that. And then as it comes down, the, the strike through is plantar flexion. So it's manipulating those forces in a, in a gym based setting. So uh, there, there, there's some shit there to play with. Love it. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a good point. And I, I think that's a great uh, uh, syllabus to have for the, for the white belt syllabus. So I think that everyone actually, should, like, tell you what, man, if you can get everyone to have that as a, if we can get everyone to have that as a stand uh, for the white belt, like, man, you're, you're already, your longevity on the mats is, is, is up in the top 20% already, immediately. Like, you think if you mm. if you grabbed a hundred people that train jujitsu full time, and and uh, go okay, can you touch the palms down to the ground? Two percent maybe could do it. Yeah, maybe. And I'm being nice here too. I'm I'm being quite polite with that. Two percent maybe. So and, and it's just the nature of the sport. It's just we generally will always have shortened hip flexors, but therefore we'll, we'll shorten the hamstrings. Therefore we'll pull on the lower back, so the lower back's tight. Obviously glutes are shortened. Um, and therefore, the, it compromises the thoracic spine and the uh, rounding shoulders, the uh, kyphotic kind of posture. Um, and, and you see that see that everywhere. Uh, they're very staunch, kind of this this kind of stuff, with the lats being this big. But really, they're just so internally rotated in. Um, yeah, I think that's a great, and I think that's a great fundamental to have for your white belt. And obviously, from there, you can we can progress uh, from there. I think it's great. It's definitely inspired me, if anything, like to make sure that now, like, I'm going to be putting a little, uh, you know, adding 20 minutes, half an hour, just a day, just to purely focus on those uh, positions so I can't get my palm stand to the ground. For sure. Yeah, and I definitely agree with what you said. Like, I think if I just added that that uh, that range in my hip flexors, I think that back pinching, that lower back pain would go away. And I think that uh, I, I feel that throughout the week, like if I'm just sitting too long, because I know I know my hip flexors are a little too tight um, and I work on it. But I think doing both at the same time, like y'all are talking about, and like like they like uh, they do in dense, um, I think that would help a little. If I just added it a little more, I think it would help overall with that lower back pain in general. And so many others like uh, in in the gym. I think those so many people would benefit just from that alone with the low back pain and any kind of knee bulletproofing. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I think the other thing that um, maybe is sometimes a little bit overlooked with the ATG thing is like, there's not a lot of like glute bridges or like hip thrusts or anything like that. And, and the primary function of the glute is to extend the hip and, and externally rotate the hip correct so torque. like the other thing that and we like we do britain you know like like shrimps and bridges with the reach over all the time in a classic pjj warm-up right but what about like a glute br bridge and then you do alternating glute marches because yeah. one of the the tests i run sometimes for glute dysfunction is like when you hold a glute bridge if i put a barbell across your hips and then you straighten one leg so the thighs and the knees are level, does it drop away, you know, like, that, and you see that hip drop, but even just that single leg um, glute bridge hold drives so much um, strength, at that isometric hold, that can improve things a lot. I, I think there, there's a gap there that's being missed, and, like, like the glutes are the most powerful oh. muscles in the body, and, like, a lot most athletic expression is some form of hip extension mm. that's why like kettlebell swings provide so much value so maybe just even some simple things there of like um pelvis tucked glute bridges because um your ability to engage your deep deep intrinsic core muscles directly influences the engagement of the glutes um so sit in that position doing some glute bridges holding the glute bridge turning that into an alternated march, turning it into a single leg glute bridge hold, turning it into um, the cook, gray cook hip lift. I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with that. It's like a bent leg holding the knee, single leg bridge or single leg. If you, so if you did that, a little bit of hip flexor work, didn't even do any like Jefferson curls in that. 
like as a test case, would you all of a sudden go back and get the standing pike? I mean, that, that would be an interesting little like thing yeah. to run for two, two weeks. If you did some hip, hip, hip flexor focusing um, and some glute, glute stuff for two weeks, three weeks, and went back to it, shit, would you have it? Because then you'd know. Like it, it wasn't the hamstring link that was like giving myself permission to actually get into that permission. Mm. That could be a cool test. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I, I often wonder why ATG kind of avoids glutes that that so much. Like I've heard them talk about it. Um, Pat Ben talked about it during the uh, ATG split squat. He just talks about really activating that glute to keep that leg extended the back leg and that's the extent of what i've heard them talk about the glutes mm. yeah 100 yeah and i guess it's more very important for uh the sport in specific like you're thinking about if you're uh in a bottom position and you've been mounted the your key to or the ability to extend your hips to create any sort of micro space is going to be extremely important if you can't extend those hips efficiently to see how the um the body dysfunction is going to make it very hard to create create those little micro spaces so you can literally you know you know when you're on the bottom trying to create some space get you know get some hands in to create you know get a little elbow a knee in and then from the knee in you get just keep building your frames up so you can regard um where other sports, maybe they don't have that. Because uh, I think what Ben comes from a, a basketball background. So I guess the glutes, are, right. I think the glutes, maybe maybe it's just a, a relationship uh, with with the glutes. Maybe the relationship is always different. Um, but at the end of the day, if you can't, you know, the ability, which which you said, Devin, which was, you know, what's, what's the role of the glute? Well, it's hip extension, and it's usually external rotation. What does that create? It creates torque in the hips, and that's where all the power comes from, from that torque. And uh, something I do with clients as well is I get them to practice screwing your feet in the ground or practice torquing up your hips. And what happens? Boom. Now you have arches. Now you have strong arches in your feet. So, again, you have strong, uh, stronger place arches in your hips. You now... Uh, you're more stable and obviously this is obviously going to help with with being on the feet as well um you know the big issue is flat feet flat feet is generally because through the lack of hip talk it's not actually not through genetics sometimes genetics have a little role in it but it's actually through the lack of hip talk so and i think that can translate to uh, many other aspects of life as well like the longevity of your knee health if you can't talk your hips, then obviously you see with the knee injuries uh, with older people, I find uh, they tend to wear, uh, if you look at their x-rays, they tend to wear more on one side. It's really common. It's because they've lost the ability to extend the hips. So then their knees kind of go like this and their feet are like this. So then you times that by 30 years, 40 years, and then go, oh, I've got arthritis in my knee. I'm, I'm 40 years old or 50. I've been trained jujitsu my whole life. Oh, just getting old. But it's like, Mm, actually you just haven't been able to send your hips for the last 30 years and now you've got this wear and tear effect of degeneration and now you've got this uh issue with meniscus or uh, arthritis of getting the cartilage done more worn than uh, one side to the other yeah, can, at this juncture can i propose then that um maybe glutes is the focus for this week yeah, because I, I think that's a gap that we've just identified, like, because mm. because all of my clients, I'm either doing like, um, you, you'll know this, um, lucky, like I'm doing the, the lock clam, you know, the Andrew lock, yeah, like, Andrew lock, yeah. yeah, 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 or I'm doing side plank clam shells, or I'm doing like lateral banded monster walks, you know, because it, it gets that like glute med firing for that hip talk. I'm often doing like glute bridges or and then the next phase of their warm-up is like alternating marches so maybe glutes is the focus this week and that would be a nice like because the shoulder health and then the role of the glutes for the hip health and what you're talking about nick specifically in terms of like the goal well both of you actually the goal of getting the palms flat maybe glutes is our focus for this week that that would be a nice direction i think i just uh, i just sent the um Dr. Andrew Locke is, is a weird dude. He's a weird, he's a weird dude, but uh, he knows his shit. He's a, he knows his shit. 
Um, yeah, if you search him up on Instagram, just send it there. Um, I can send. I've got his building the foundation PDF. Oh, like uh, really? Pages. I'll, I'll drop that into the um. Okay. The group for everyone because it's got links to videos too. It's, oh, got, great. it's got some neck. Yeah, I think you guys will find that a nice. Actually, it's 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 got the sh the big three, the shoulder big three in there. Mm -hmm. That document actually, in terms of as a, a base point for all, all BJJ athletes, is a really useful starting point. I'll drop that in to the um the group today. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Um, it's kind of going off uh, topic, and feel free to add any um points to this, guys. Um, it's actually something that you said uh, earlier, Devon. It's just kind of going off track a little bit, but. Um, you're saying running the face-to-face -face sessions um, and all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of the time is, is, is usually the issue. And uh, so uh, just a, uh, just a short background for the last couple of years, I was running a uh, face-to-face business during the typical 30 to 60 sessions a week. Um, and uh, one, it's a great, it's a great business because you, you, you tend to um, it's a, it, it's a very good six figure business at least. Um, but the issue is, is the lifestyle. And then the, we're now starting to see the issue is, um, and I think I'm just, this is just from experience. I'm starting to see that uh, the face-to-face -face model is, is um, very dependent on, on, on the, uh, if gyms stay open. And um, so my story so far recently, uh, I'm, I can't remember, it was maybe a, four or five months ago, I think we had a couple of lockdowns and I literally made that call. I was like, I'm literally moving everything online. And then I'm going to slowly reintroduce some face to face, but having the online as one of the main sources of income. And um, since I've been doing that, um, definitely the lifestyle, uh, I'm, able, I'm able to um, understand my values. So my values is, is, is a good lifestyle. I control my time. I want to be able to, you know, if I want to go see you guys in America or if I want to go visit Devon in New Zealand, I can do that and still be able to work. Um, so just, just some ideas that uh, I think every PT tends to go through is we go, we build these, uh, this, the, the face to face business up is, is the number one thing. And, um, it depends on your values though. It just depends on your values. If you want to work at a gym full time, then that's definitely the business model for you. Um, but if you want to be able to have a bit more uh, diversity, I guess, with the business, then maybe have mixing a little bit online and, and face to face. Or what I did was going full time online, built that up. So now I can actually just pay the bills and put a little bit of money away. And now I'm going to slowly reintroduce face to face, but the, the face to face are going to be the high quality kinds. They're going to be the like, you know, I'm sure you guys have worked with people where they, if you tell them something, they do it. If you go read this book, they do it. Um, you know, you give them the program, they do it. They don't ask any questions, they just do it. And I'm leaving that 20% gap there just for those clients because those are the ones that give, give the best results and they give you the best testimonials and they give you the best referrals as well. Um, so yeah, just some ideas, uh, just with that. Where, where do you think you're, you're at with that, Devon? Like, um, with now doing doing your full full time business. Um, I bet I also think there's an there's you got we've got this HEG for grappler stuff too. So, how do you uh, foresee over the next three six months, even to a year now? Like, where where would you start to be in, in that time frame. Mm. So I think it's a great question. I think it's a good question for all of us to start considering where do we want our lives to, what, what kind of lifestyle do we want? You know what I mean? What, you know, what kind of life? Because I think sometimes we, we get caught up in the now and we just don't think of it. Oh, okay. Fuck, five years. Do I still want to be running a full-time face-to-face? I don't know. I, th I think for me, Personally, I want to, I would like to have a model that strikes a balance between the face-to-face -face time and the value of the, the income, the, the, the diversification of income stream that online provides, mm. you know, um, because I get so much energy and value from that 
contact mm. time with people mm. you know like so i don't Healthy. ever see that I don't ever see that element disappearing from my life or my mm. model. But I miss I it. I think, definitely miss it. Mm. Yeah. And, and, but I definitely think I can integrate. And one of the great struggles I've always had with the online thing is like creating the checks and balances to ensure the quality control. You know, that's mm. why I like, tr like true coach and that platforms like that improve the ability to ensure quality control because um, clients can directly load videos you can put your own videos and you know what i mean but previously it was, i feel like it was harder like you just send someone a, a pdf of the training program and it's like um joe defranco said it the other day like basically said that it, 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 you know he runs into people at, at, at the train station they're like oh joe i'm the greatest fan i've been following your like strong bastard 911 program for 15 years and it's like he looks at them and it's like but you don't look like you have been it's like can you send me a video of like and then he gets a video mm. of their form and it's like ah fuck so that's one of my great great internal struggles is like when i'm face to face with clients i can like lay it like all of my clients i drive technique because one of my my personal mottos is i want them to outgrow me I want them to be able to walk into any gym and understand the way I approach their training from a template perspective. You know, I want them to be able to train themselves in, in a safe and effective, do no harm, principle number one, do no harm, like, you know, like, you know, I think we said last time, like, do no harm, number two, like, know your shit, number three, don't touch the girls, you know, like, mm. you know, like, I, I want them to have one and two, do no harm, and uh, number three is good as well, actually, you know, like, <laughs> But um, yeah, to, to, the to, to, your, one. To, to your question, um, this, this thing I, I'm creating, this education, that, that's my focus right now. And right now that is an in-person education model, but it, because of the demand created for like conveying so much information, I'm going to have, I have to record more stuff, which will lend itself towards me creating a, an online platform in some manner or form what that looks like I, I don't know you know like um and, and just recording the workshops himself creates an mm. online space but yeah I definitely like i i want to start a family in the next two years i i can't mm. be doing 45 con contact sessions a week i want time i want to free up time you know i want to free up time so that it, it, that is a really yeah that's a valid question but yeah uh, to sum up i don't ever see the in-person piece leaving i get so much out of that but i think my in-person model is going to move towards a one-to-many model and then i think the online thing i, I could offer I, I would like to look at maybe offering premium service which is like for a top dollar you get more personalized attention and then you can have the like Ben Patrick style one to many model, which is like a one size fits all program. To, I think there's ways you can do that online space that cater to different people as well, you know? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's some thoughts I, off the top it's of my great, head. Yeah, great. It's a great answer. What, what do you, uh, Ethan uh, and Nick, what do, you, what do you guys think? Like uh, if, you, if, if you go, what is your ideal lifestyle like? I, and I definitely agree with what Devin said he was about. Uh, I, I tell you personally, I, I miss the face-to-face. -face. I miss that interaction. I, um, I think what I initially thought, you know, running full-time online was great, but I, now I'm starting to see that I, I need a little bit of face-to-face. -face, you know I mean? I, I love my lifestyle. I love to travel and be free and be able to be nimble. Uh, so that's why I value the online. But if, you, if I ask myself the question, I'd say I probably prefer face-to-face. Uh, because of the interaction you get that buzz that connection building you know that those relationships with people but yeah what, what do you guys think Ethan and Nick like where, where, where do you want to see yourselves uh, with your businesses in the future go ahead um, Ethan yeah I can start I'd say well like I was sharing earlier I, I'm yet to really uh, I'm still in college I'm a student for the most part so I'm yet to really train any clients one-on-one -on -one, but that's definitely where I want to head towards and um yeah I've had a lot of been thinking a lot about what the best approach is you know in terms of uh how to maximize profits while still providing a, you know a good service and um 
yeah, I've been thinking about that stuff a lot. So I think it's important conversation to have. And um, yeah, I think I lean more towards wanting to do the in-person stuff, but like you're saying, it takes a lot of uh, hourly, it sounds like it takes a lot of hourly effort to do that. And uh, you know, might not be the most effective in terms of making money. And, and so that's something I'm starting to think about more, so. What about you, Nick? So as for me, uh, I, so as soon as I got my certification as a trainer, I, that was kind of always my goal is to be online. Uh, I knew I'd have to start in person because um, just to get those reps in, get, get some uh, understanding of the deeper things that you can't really just get from watching videos and stuff. Um, but yeah, so my goal is basically the type of clients that I want to work with aren't exactly the highest paying clients. Like I, I love working with young athletes that, that like, like the BJJ guys or like even high school kids, like obviously none of them are going to have much money, if any at all. And so those are the people kind of people I want to work with. So I want to set up some kind of online business to where I'm, I'm still making enough money and uh, even a great amount of money to sustain myself and do very well um, and put a lot of energy and effort into that. But at the same time, I want, I want to be doing uh, in person with the people that I really want to like, that I get the most out of, like you're saying, kind of the, uh, not necessarily for me, the premium clients, but, but I guess just most that I get from them spiritually and like energetically, um, I feel like young clients like me when I was in high school, I wish that I would have had somebody like me that was willing to teach me all the right things. And I just feel like all the coaches didn't give a shit. And there was so many little details, so many opportunities that for them to teach us and, and just help us do the right things uh, through. And those, those things would have carried on with me throughout my whole life, but because they didn't, to do that now there's thousands of athletes out there that just started off in the wrong way and they're going to continue most of their lives in the wrong way unless somebody changes that trajectory for them so i want to do that i want to be that person for those types of people uh, but i also want to make money and so i'm, I'm mm -hmm. trying to figure out the best way to do that online right now um yeah so that's basically where i'm at mm -hmm. I haven't started any kind of online at all. I've started building up my social media, um, trying to post a lot more content. And that's kind of where I've started with that. Uh, eventually, I think I'll start creating some kind of program that I can sell. And then that's that's the plan for right now. Love it. Hmm. I think it's great. Oh, you, you, you reminded me of that, um, the coach, uh, the quote from John Wooden. You know, a good coach can change a game and a great coach can change a life. Mm. Uh, I love that. That's, it. that's what I heard from you, Nick, and that's, bro, that's a kudos to that. You know? um, gentlemen, I'm going to have to go. I've got my mom in town. I'm taking her to Yamcha. Um, cool. Awesome. Yeah. I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing yeah. again. Thank you, to yeah. everyone, for your time and your energy. Thanks, Devin. Yeah, thanks, Devin. Yeah, thank really you, appreciate man. it. I'll, um, as I said, I'll drop that um, Andrew Locke building the foundation PDF in the, um, the chat because I, I think it's got a cool reference document for like the pillar and, and getting that, some of those things going. It's quite rudimentary, but he just had so much success in Australia um, with like people with lower back pain and that. And that's the upper end of the spectrum of what we're talking about with BJJ guys. So I'll drop that in. And, um, and, and um, I might take some photos of what I shared with you guys and drop it in the group just as a reference to yeah. as well for the workshop. Please yeah, do. Thanks, team. Thank hey, you so much, bro. Peace. All right, thanks, Peace. Evan. I'll talk to you later, dude. Sounds good, bro. Peace. Cool, guys. Um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty pumped on this call, man. Like, uh. Is anything you guys, um, it's been, what's it been now? It's probably been an hour. Yeah, about an hour. Um, is there anything you guys want to add uh, to this week's call? Is there any other questions or any other ideas that you guys want to share with right now? Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Ethan. 
Uh, I was going to say the one thing I thought of during the call was uh, maybe a good discussion to have in the future would be thinking of like some sort of uh, normative numbers or testing protocols that we want to uh, use for, for BJJ people, uh, you know, ideally no equipment needed. It sounds like Devin's already on that and right. I think thinking of exercises we can tack onto there and numbers for those exercises that we think would be good standards for people. Mm, start thing. to build our yeah. syllabus, but start to build the syllabus. So, so. Syllabus, yeah. Yeah, exactly. okay. I agree. Yeah, I think that's good. And you know what? I think this is what, what this all will do is actually start keeping us uh, accountable for that. Um, such as, you know, the discussion we said during the, during the pike, I think like we might be in similar positions um, with that. So really like if anything, it, this, 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 this uh, talk today has inspired me to go, fuck, I, I really got to try and level up my game. So that way, one, I can, you know, start being the, the endorsed ATG coach, but also uh, be the role model for other jujitsu athletes. So they can actually go, you know what, man, like I was so fucking tight five years ago, you wouldn't believe I couldn't even get past my knees. But now, you know, with the system that we've worked on, now you can do that. So it's it's just uh, I think that's uh, you know the old saying with coaching, you know, you you are the walking advertisement. You know what I mean? So if, if you know, I mean, if you uh, are fat and overweight, you know, it's gonna be very hard to sell yourself. But you know, if you can, you know, touch you know palms to the ground and able to do good form with ATG stuff, um, I think naturally uh and you know obviously film it with good content i think naturally you're just going to have clients because fuck i want to do that you know what i mean or yeah. i, w- I want to look like that um so yeah i feel that's gonna i think that's great and i think what we can do is start looking at ways that we can start building the first syllabus the first syllabus is going to be uh the white belt syllabus and then what we can do is then we'll see it, the goal for that is making sure we can all do the white belt syllabus. And once we got the white belt syllabus, once we feel like, yep, this is a really good couple standards to have, then we can build into the blue belt. Yeah. And as we progress as, as people as well, um, we were able to build those, build those out um, within the future as well. Um, Awesome. That's a great idea. Yeah. Just one more thing, I guess, with, with everything, um, the I think the professional development within this 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 uh, coaching calls too is going to be is super important as well. I think naturally as we grow as people, as I said, the business will follow. Um, so, uh, is there anything that you guys want to work on specifically? Like uh, this week was kind of about just organization. How do you organize your day and stuff like that? Um, but is there any uh, challenges that you guys are currently facing right now as, as you know, stepping into a role as a coach and just growing as a person in general? Is there, is there something that you guys would like to focus on for this week so we can start having those discussions? Off the top, I just think of time management. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, but, time and management. I feel like that kind of goes into organizing your day a little bit, but uh, okay. maybe, maybe there's there's some of it that can run off and be by itself too yeah i'd say that also one thing that came to mind maybe we could do it uh talk a bit about relationships um uh could be like family relationships or you know partner relationships whatever that be Mm -hmm. yeah i don't know i think it's great you're bringing that stuff up lucky i mean um it couldn't be a better time for me to start thinking about a lot of that stuff Mm. and uh, yeah, I appreciate you incorporating that and this not just being about the body and BJJ. I mean, there's so much more to it, like you said. So, mm. yeah, and I, I just, I just think like if I was, I'm just trying to reminisce, you know, when I was your age, you know, and what would I done differently? And it's like I wish, one, I was always, it was so, I was so focused on just learning the body and learning all that, but I really forget there's another aspect of training, and this is something that I really work on with with the clients that i work with now it's like you also want to be you know the black belt off the mat now and i as there's so many black belts uh, I, again i don't know in america but in australia but off the mat they're just a freaking yellow belt and which is fine but the problem is they they're not great role models to have in the gym you want to as a role model and this is like even like i try and be the best role model i can it's like uh so wow, I actually want to be like him, but be better like him. You know what I mean? 
And yeah. I think when you instill that culture within your coaching business, but on the mats as well, like I feel like that's gonna, it's it's how to build good culture, I think. And um, really? we, we're not, we just don't see enough of that. And I feel like if we can build this culture, what we're trying to do, I guess, what we're figuring out along the way, building this culture within the group chat, I think that's gonna really uh, help us uh, progress faster, but also um, uh, keep us all accountable too. Like it's definitely it's the, all this conversation saying like, fuck, man, I got to be a lot more accountable for my training, making sure I get to these adequate standards that we're talking about today. Um, so yeah, anything else you guys want to add? Obviously, add to it, of course. But uh, I think I think today's been a really good conversation. Every time, man. Every time. So uh, I just want to ask. Please. what your um what your online business looks like right now because yeah. it seems like you're doing pretty well all right that's a good question so uh yeah as i said the long the long story short is i i i had to i had to make the call because uh uh in australia right now they literally just will open things up and then close them down open yeah. things up locally and right. i mean i mean literally you open for a week and then they close them back down and uh yeah, I don't know. Is, is, is that the same in America right now or have they stopped that or? It's all over the place. They can't, it's a mess, man. Yeah, it's a mess. And I don't want to get into it. Like we all know it's it's all bullshit and stuff. It's all political now. Right. Um, but I, I, I just thought like, fuck, I can't survive on this. Like I can't rely on, because I much prefer the face-to-face -face model, to be honest. Like I actually don't prefer online. I, that's something I've learned since transition. I'm like, fuck, I actually don't prefer this. But yeah. I don't want to get affected by these things anymore. I actually want to profit from these things. So every time there's a lockdown now, now I have clients reach out, new people reaching out to me. Man, Jim's close. Like this gets happening. What what should I do? So now instead of if you talk to a lot of PTs, they go, "Oh my God, it's the worst thing in the world." Like I actually get more business every time things shut down now. Instead, last time I would lose business, but now I'm getting more business from it. Um, as I said, I don't prefer the online because I actually much prefer the relationships I get from face to face. But uh, one, I value, you know, be able to nimble, you know, be able to, you know, stuck in hotel quarantine right now, but I'm still be able to work. You know what I mean? I would have been screwed if I couldn't work. You know what I mean? Like, yes, I could you know, take into my savings, but like, that's, I don't want to do that. I want to keep building my business and keep saving. You know what I mean? So, um, so what I'm doing at the moment, I have a mix of a couple of things and I, the, the, the reason why is the mix because I'm surely evolving the business to a model that I have. So I've got, I've merged two business models into what I'm doing now. So the first one is basically what uh, Ben Patrick is doing, right? So it's like coaching your form and stuff like that. So you give them obviously a program to do um, and then, you know, get them to send your last three reps of your last set. Um, so that way you can, you can actually coach the form and something that Ben was really good at, he still is, is able to get immediate feedback. So I'm like being immediate and I'm using true coach too, by the way, I'm using true awesome. coach. Um, so using that now, uh, one of my, uh, other, uh, friends who I used to work in the same gym, he's gone online as well. He runs a, nutri a nutrition, uh, coaching business. So, mm -hmm. and, uh, so once a week, he'll do a consult, a consult with him, like a check-in. So the check-in is usually about 20 minutes. Um, and uh, you go, all right, what did you do well? What didn't you do well? What were your wins? What were your losses? And then readjust their, their, their nutrition uh, program from there, readjust their training program from there, and then basically off they go and then answer any questions in between the next time they do their check-in. Hmm. Um, so I kind of do that. So I have one train them face to uh, face to face via zoom so i do that that's with my clients i've been with a couple of years um and now the second way i've been running clients is i do this check-in thing so i coach their form and then once a week i do a check-in with them um because i've i'm quite new to this model the conversations sometimes take a little bit longer so sometimes they take 45 minutes sometimes i'm on point and they take half an hour um, sometimes we end up chatting for an hour, but all the people that I work with, I have relationships with these people. So it's kind of hard to, I'm finding the new challenge now is how do I get it right down to 20 minutes? And, um, as I'm talking this out, I feel like I need to have more questions prepared. So I know exactly what boom, 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 boom. 
mm-hmm. and then cool next one because as i get busier i won't be able to chat as long you know i've got to go boom next check-in like same thing as a face-to-face boom boom next client boom next one next one next one right um and that's how i've been currently doing with that uh i get them books to read um so any books that i, I listen on audible or i read on my kindle or just read uh um, fiction this is uh this is a really good book. I should recommend Richest Man in Babylon. Uh, That's a, a great book. Yeah, classic, classic book. Um, and uh, something I'll do with the group chat, I'll, I'll start screenshotting the, the books that I read. So if, if it's a title that entices you or a problem that you're trying to face at the moment, um, feel free to buy those books. Um, and that's how I've been doing it. Now, the, the challenge uh, right now is creating a funnel. So a lot of my business comes from referrals. Um, I am currently working with one uh, client. She, she has a MS, a motor, motor neuron. Um, I can't remember the, the whole thing. So basically the neurons stop firing up. So basically like the message to receive to move my hand. That's how it kind of works. Um, so she has a carer and we, we, we're we doing, um, sometimes we do face to face and then sometimes we do like conversations. What were the challenges this week? You know, what were the goals? Okay, what what points did you do well? What points you didn't do well? And then the next session we'll do is like a training session. Um, it's just an idea for you guys. If uh, disability w- uh, work is is massive it's con- and it's continuing to get bigger. Um, I don't know if that's something that I want to go into full time, but that's something I am currently doing at the moment. And it pays really well. Um, I'm getting, obviously, depending on where you live and the disability uh, schemes that are available it's i get paid uh i think it's 107 107 dollars an hour and then i get paid another uh hour um which, which yeah i get paid another hour to do reporting so i, go, I give them a report so I give them an update so that so the the carers know what's going on and the family members know what's going on with her um wow. and i do and i do that online as well um, give them books, uh, give them, you know, make sure they're meditating, uh, make sure they do their breath work, um, journal, all that kind of stuff. So that's another, actually there's three things. So it kind of shows you that you don't have to have this per- perfect model. I've just started and I'm kind of just, yeah. I'm just kind of just figuring it out as, as I go. Um, but the, the one that I want to do the most is these check-ins. If I can just do the check-ins and coach their form, I, I'm able to run a able to have a lot more people um, with that model the only problem is is again it kind of gets stuck into that face-to-face model because there's only so many people you can can work with um, so I don't know where that future is whether I end up looking for other coaches like yourself um, but the issue is is I need to make sure I create good funnels that are consistently generating new clients in um so right now uh i'm almost finished actually devin kind of called me out on it um so because a lot of my foundation works actually from building people's morning routines and night routines because when you start to build your morning routines and night routines you have to start prioritizing your health and when people start prioritizing their health they start to recognize the bullshit and the barriers that they put on, on themselves um so I, i'm currently just you know, almost finishing a, just a pdf ebook on how to create your morning routine yeah. and then tips how to do that. And then my, what my plan is from there, I'm either gonna, there's two ways I'm looking, I actually would love your feedback. I'm gonna uh, get people to go attend to a masterclass on this. So I'll give everyone the free ebook and then I'm gonna expand on the book. And then from there, then I'm gonna direct them to my coaching from there. So I gave them heaps of value. Um, I'm gonna go through my Facebook, um, just my normal, normal personal Facebook. And I'm literally going to message every single person. Hey, how are you going? How's your mental health? Blah, blah, blah. Hey, I just created an ebook. Um, what's your email address? So I just wanted to send it to you. So hopefully you can just take one thing. And if you take one thing, like, fuck, like, it's, it's, I've done my job right. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm looking at ways to build new clients that way. Um, and then obviously from there, like, there's obviously YouTube, there's the podcast. So I'm still trying to figure it out, of course. But I think the most important part just from just articulating what I'm doing right now is there's no perfect model. You just kind of kind of just have to start and then kind of figure out along the way, I guess. 
Um, yeah. and, that, and that's that's what I've been doing um, at the moment. Uh, as I said, I don't prefer online, but it does give me my lifestyle that I want. It creates nimble and, um, you know what, I'd, I'd pick that every single time. You know what I mean? I, I, I value my lifestyle over money every single day. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with the online space. Like, I know you guys definitely want to do it and uh, people will often say it's hard and all that. Man, I don't think it is. It's just going to show if you can still give people value face to face. Like, And you know what? Think about the world, what's going to happen in 20 years from now. It's going to get more virtual. It's not going to get, this is not going to, like, this is not the, the last time we see this stuff. It's just technology is going to come more in our lives uh, you know, we're going to have more of this, these conversations around the world. Like the fact that we're talking to people around the world right now is crazy. And this is going to keep happening. So, and when people say they have objections, because some people won't actually prefer online and that's, you know, absolute respect. But for the most part, it's like, look, man, you're going to kick any lockdowns. You're going to have new challenges along the way. This is going to continue yeah. to happen. You know what? Like, like g- give me, give me uh, one month uh, commitment and I'll guarantee I'll prove you that I can still give you results for within one month and show you that you don't need to have a face-to-face all the time. Um, and even, and then even if they still have a Jackson, okay, cool. Let me teach you my foundations of my training for the next 12 weeks. So that way you have a good foundation understanding. And now you know how to find a really good coach as well, but you have a good fun, fundamental uh, uh, background now. So therefore, you know, your longevity of health is definitely in the first place of your mind. And this, like I said, there's a few ways you can handle those objections as well. But um, but my challenge right now is creating content. You know what I mean? That's like, what kind of content do I want? What content do I want from Instagram? I know you guys have been doing that a little bit. Uh, I know Nick's definitely been doing that. And I think uh, I just had this breakthrough actually last night. I was like, fuck, you know what I mean? I just need to literally copy what Ben's doing. Like literally just yeah. copy. Literally just copy that. Like that's all you, all I've got to do. And I was so it's just an idea for you guys. Obviously, put your spin to it, of course, but literally just yeah. copy it. But what's one problem with the copying is you have to be able to do the movements. Yeah. Yeah. So, so <laughs> since we've <laughs> you know what I mean? So since having these conversations and today, I'm like, oh fuck, all right, I gotta really double down um and really uh, make sure I get uh level one at least done. Um, I can do the split squats now, but I don't have any rings. So if I don't have rings, because I think that it's the ring push up with uh, perfect form. Um, yeah. So so I don't have that. So I have to do the pike right now. So fuck it. All right, let's go. So, um, <laughs> and I think you, as I was saying earlier, yeah, you're the walking advertisement. So you can touch the palms down to the ground. You can do those split squats. Like people are like, fuck, I want to do that. Um, so that's that's where I'm sort of heading now with my journey so far with the uh, online coaching model. So hopefully we'll I'll give you an update each week or something like that. It's killer. Hope that helps out. Yeah, I love having this uh, kind of check in and during the weekend to kind of put every get everybody back on track if they've been slacking at all. Because I know that helps it helps me for sure. We all do, man. Uh, mm. And I, th- I love what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love what you're talking about with the ebooks. I think that's where I want to head to. And I think that's um, the best starting value to give somebody. It's, it's just figuring out what to do next after that, you know, kind of what you were saying, the master class or, or something else, you know. Mm. It's just seeing one, one step at a time, you know what I mean? I'm just one, one right. step, you know, create the ebook. And I, I'm not the best writer in the world, and but I understand that. You know, just it take me a lot, it took me a week to write it up, but I understand that it's a skill that must be learned. You know, the you know, what's if you look at Ben, like his his articulation's getting better, his copyright's getting better, and it's through practice and repetition and repetition. And I, I can see that that that's that's the path that I gotta do, just keep punching forward. Um and uh and then once you, know, you get it out there, it's out there. Like it, it the work's done for you and it's gonna keep doing keep working for you. Yeah. I think Ben's gearing up to go on Joe Rogan, and then at that point, he's just gonna call it and just be like, "You made it." Once he's on there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Lockie, I was gonna say, like Nick said last time, we owe you, we owe you, man, for 
for doing all this. It sounds like you provide a lot of value to your clients. And I feel like I'm getting some of that value, not even uh, being one of your clients, just being you and, and being inspired by your lifestyle and, and that kind of stuff. So thank you, man. No, and Deb, well, thank you. And, and all you guys. I appreciate it, man. Like I said, uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're all on this journey together. You know what I mean? And uh, I think if we can, like, I can always learn stuff from you or I can learn stuff from Nick. Like we, we can all learn, like we all have our own things that we can learn from each other. And I think it's about um, utilizing technology now. Like we can learn faster than we ever have before in human history. Like that's that's the reality. Like audio books, fucking you know, books we got um yeah you know, kindle like you told me a book i boom i buy it straight away and then i've got the information like straight away um you know we've got these group chats now that we can share ideas and stuff like that so i feel like uh utilizing this atg uh form that we have and actually going you know what let's how how can we grow as people and as coaches at the same time and fast track this progress you know what i mean so and like fuck man i wish i had this information when i was your age you know what i mean like i'm 28 years yeah. years now 28 years old now but uh, I seeing that fuck, I, I can't keep these these young kids playing catch up. You know, I, I gotta I gotta make sure I'm on my uh, on my toes all the time, and uh, it's about utilizing these conversations and sharing ideas. And I think, um, like I said, you guys helped me a lot as well. Even just allowing me the space to uh, talk about my ideas and stuff. So I have yeah. nothing nothing but to thank you guys as well within that. Killer. All right. Um, is there anything else you guys want to uh, um, bring up or anything like that? I think that's sort of that's yeah. it for today. Next week, same time. Yeah, same time next week. Um, I'll I'll basically do what I did last week. Um, but this time, what I'll do is now actually what I'll do. I'll just stop recording.